Hey guys, welcome to Testing Academy. My name is Pramod and welcome to the 30 days of automation in testing. Guys, this is the day 26 and we are on, on a journey to learn automation testing as well as Selenium, guys. And if you haven't watched the previous video, I will highly recommend you to go watch them. Like in this video, we are going to discuss all about the data driven framework in Selenium. I'm going and I'm going to show you step by step how to implement it. What is it? What are the major advantages and that you should know as a QA, right? Uh, I'm excited to show all the things. So let's get started, right? All right. Guys. So uh, before we before we jump in, right, I just wanted to let you know that uh, we are doing a 30 days automation in testing challenge, guys. Uh, I will recommend you to watch the previous videos because those contain immense value about the uh, basically we have started with Selenium, right? Well, started learning Cypress, Selenium and lots of different concepts related to it and step by step we have implemented a uh, domain search name uh, name chip domain search basically can and created lots of automation scripts around it right so let's jump into the video which is uh let's start with what is data driven framework right so uh this is uh if you see on the left hand side right we have traditional framework which is called as normal framework right what we have is that uh, we have test scripts test data right along with the selenium code that we have written and which basically directly uh, directly, uh, we have written set test scripts, which uh, which will basically interact with your web application directly. Now, now the problem here is that uh, suppose I have multiple test data that I wanted to have. If I have a lot, if I have a test data which is bulky, heavy, and I want to fetch it from MySQL or or large Excel files, it will be very difficult to do it, right? So in DDT, which is data driven testing. What you can do is that what we are doing is we are basically separating out the test data in that case, right? So now test data will be fetched from a different, uh, for example, source resource. Uh, it can be Excel file, it can be XML file, MySQL database, anything like this, right? So that's how DDT works. So basically, we are separating out the test scripts logic and the test data from each other, right? So our create uh, so create the automation script by passing the test data. So now what you can do is that uh, you can have so suppose I have a username and password. I have 10 persons username and password and I want to basically iterate over it and try to log in and see if login login is successful or not. This is the exactly demo that we are going to do, right? Trust me. So just wait for a few more theoretical concepts, right? So that you can achieve in data driven, right? You can achieve in traditional framework also, but that will be again, uh, you are gonna write, you're gonna write long code uh, due to that thing, right? And probably gonna do some hard coding and all. But in the DDT framework, what you can do is that you can have a separate test data uh, class or somewhere uh, logic. So your test data will be fetched, and after that, your test script will run based on the multiple test data that you have. Here. So I'm gonna explain you everything in example. Trust me, just go, let's let's learn why it is important, right? So why the data driven is important because uh, uh trust me guys this is one of the questions that people ask why ddt is required right so what you can do is uh so with ddt your test data can be at a one place right so you don't have to worry about it uh your test data is not basically implemented or you can say modularized in the other scripts your test data will be a separate out it will be in, it will be in a particular folder structure or it can be in certain files right uh, but it will be in, at a one piece. That's what we can do. And what you can do is that you can easily execute the multiple test at a test, uh, multiple sets of test data in a test script, right? For example, that we have discussed earlier, you have a username or password of a 10 people that you can implement. Uh, so basically you can iterate over it and uh, I, uh, check these scripts according to, right? So you can easily execute that thing. So that's why DDT is important. Right. So what uh, again, if we talk about the advantages of DDT, we have re reusability of a code because uh, we are uh, our test data is separated out. So we can reuse lots of code and our functions or automation scripts should be generic. Right. Right. Uh, it improves the test coverage. So uh, because our test data is different, so it improves the test coverage, faster execution, less maintenance because uh, suppose if something change, for example, if uh, if we have locators or certain data into the test data uh, test data part, right? If they changes, so what what we have to change is only the test data, not the automation scripts. That's a very very major advantage of DDT. That's why we prefer it. And lots of people even uh, I've been into this industry for more than eight years, right? And uh, people prefer DDT. 
that's why one of the reason is because less maintenance faster execution and re reusability this is these are three core advantages <clears throat> and it also permits you can say permits better error handling in that case that thing is right so uh, so let's discuss about the what is apache pui library right so apache pui library is nothing but say open source library to work with the microsoft documents so if you want to work microsoft document related to excel right so in excel also we have x uh, X xlx and xls format right and also there is a csp format also but for the csp you can directly work right uh, but if you are dealing with those microsoft documents uh, you need to use certain libraries and these apache pui library can help you in that case right uh, if you haven't watched my previous video about how to use apache pui library i'll recommend you to watch it because that contains the same code that we are going to use in this one ddt right uh, you can read write the, your ms excel file using the uh, apache pui library right so this is the code time and before uh, let's go to the code first but if you want to download the source code that i am going to discuss about go to scrolltest.com slash automation day 26 you're going to get the all the information right so let's talk about the let's uh, see what is it so suppose i have a username and password so right now i have written very uh, simple username which is a and password is a again and we have b and b password right so uh, i know it's very uh, weak or i probably say probably the worst uh, excel file i have but yeah it uh, it, it 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 works right so I'm just it, it's an example right so i want to iterate over it so i want to I basically try to log in with a a username and password and after that b b username and password right so how you can do that let's go to let's jump to the source code right so uh, before that if you haven't watched my previous video how to create this project i will recommend you to go and watch the apache pui library because in that video we have discussed about how to create this maven project if you already know how to create a maven project at dependency of test ng selenium and poi then it's good to go right uh, again let me give you again uh, uh, let me reiterate uh, what you can do is that you just need to create a new project right and a new project new maven project and after creating the project you just need to add the uh, dependency in the pom.xml right if you haven't watched my previous video recommend it but uh, you can follow up with the download example so if you download the source code the all the structure will be there so you don't need to worry about right so you will see a ddt file right so what we are going to do is that let's jump into it so i have the file this file which is aabb right and uh, what what we are going to do is very simple one so let me open this url and show you what exactly we are going to do right uh, okay right so this is a dummy url uh, which basically a test app hosted if i enter a username a and password a and submit uh, there is a login successful right so this is like a one user logging in right similarly if i do with bb it it will again log in right so that we want to emulate 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 basically sorry <laughs> yeah right so let's see how we can do it right uh, so this is a typical structure of a test ng we have a before test uh, what we are doing is we are creating a driver of firefox uh, we are opening the url maximizing and just waiting for five seconds to load the page right so now the magic happens here so what you need to do is that uh, you have added the dependency right so what the first step in uh, is that you need to get the file right so file i have put it here so td.xl is already here so i just need to write the path of it and again after getting the file uh, object or instance right you need to pass it to the file input stream and input stream you need to pass to the workbook right because it's a x l x uh, sx file you need to use the xss workbook right so it will return a workbook now uh, if you haven't mind uh, if you if you have watched the previous video Generally, what we have is that we have a workbook, sheet, uh, row, and cells, right? So first, we need to create the instance of the workbook. So how, how we have done it is basically we have created a private variable of workbook, and we have passed the input stream of the file, right? So now our workbook is bas basically accessible, which is basically this one, right? Uh, this is the sheet one because it contains only sheet one sheet. Uh, if I click second one, right? So it will create a second sheet also right but we don't want it as of now so uh what you can do is that you can get it by index so zeroth will be the always first one where we have written the or data 
which is username and password in that case, right? So let me delete this one so that we don't have any confusion, right? So what I'm doing is that I'm getting the total row count, which is basically, uh, if you see one, two, three, right? And I want to iterate for one because uh, the first one is headers, right? And what I'm doing is that I'm getting the cell. So first cell, and I have used a date formatter to get the format of it. So basically string username, Username will be the zeroth one, which is basically the, this one, right? And uh, similarly, we have password, which will be the uh, this one, right? So this, and we are basically iterating over it. So first, for the for, so, so what will happen in first case is basically, uh, we'll have in username, we'll have, we'll have A, and here we have B, right? Now, the magic starts is basically, what we are doing is that, uh, we have already opened the URL, right? So now we just need to, so basically we are using find by element. We are putting the username and password, clicking on it, three second wait, and we are basically checking for if the sign off button is there, which means login is successful. So we have added an assertion also. And after that, we are just signing off, right? So this will be your first one. So AA entering AA and after submit button, right? And it will again go to uh, with a BB value, right? So because iteration is there, right? Uh, we want to iterate over it now. So let's see, uh, let's, let me show you the demo, uh, how it's running. So let's start. Let me put myself here. And uh, we have started the execution, right? And uh, here we have, right? So Firefox is open. Let's see if it is, yeah, it's going to a URL and uh, it's opening the url waiting for some time entering the username and password so let's see if it is able to enter it or not okay waiting for page load yeah maximizing it entering aa submit button logging successful right so this is the first iteration done successfully signing out again bb so login successful everything works fine right and signing off again <laughs> everything passed it means or sorry it means everything works fine right so that's how what uh, that's how you achieve the ddt especially in selenium right so we have uh, read a particular excel file and we have successfully implemented into this selenium code where we are basically iterating over the username and password so that is the data driven paper that we have created right i hope you have learned something new in this video let me know in the comments if you have any doubt if you have any question related to it I will be happy to help, right? Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.